Welcome to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and this is a place where we don't rely on good luck or good genes for our health and happiness, but rather we create it with our thoughts and our actions each and every single day. Each week, I'll bring you a thought or a guest that will help you live your happiest and healthiest life. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. Today, we're talking all about oral health and how it's the gateway to our internal health. What you may not realize is that our oral hygiene can be a window into what's going on in the rest of our body. And if we have inflammation and bleeding gums, bad breath, any funky stuff going on in our mouth, we probably have some funky stuff going on in our body as well. So today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Trina Felber. She was a registered nurse for over 25 years, and then after a few personal events, which she'll share about, she transitioned to creating a oral care company called Primal Life Organics. Her philosophy is a revolutionary new way of looking at oral care. I'm pretty sure that after this episode, you're going to want to run to the bathroom and brush your teeth because of all the knowledge that Trina drops. Of course, you won't be brushing them in the traditional way anymore. You are probably going to rethink your entire oral care routine. So I hope you enjoy this interview. I know I did. I learned so much and I'm excited to share Trina's knowledge with you. Trina, thanks for being here. Oh, Maria, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk dirty mouth with you. I know. I, you know, I have so many questions for you. And well, first, I just want to start with how did you go from nursing? You were a registered nurse for 25 years. What made you switch over into the oral care space? Well, I originally started in skincare and the switch actually happened. I was 40 years old. My husband and I had just gotten married and I got pregnant, which I was surprised because I was 40. I thought I'd have issues, but I got pregnant right away. And then I suffered a miscarriage. And that just made me stop and look at everything that I'm using in my body, on my body, like my detergent, my soaps, everything. And one morning when I'm, I got pregnant again right away and I was at seven weeks, the same point where I had miscarried, I was getting ready for work and I was putting on my moisturizer and it was from a company that I trusted. They were organic, natural. And then I saw some things in their ingredient list that I was like, that is not natural and that's not organic, like fragrance. I know those are toxins. And if they're getting in me, I know they could be getting in my baby. And I'm not saying that that's the correlation between my miscarriage and, you know, my in skincare. But at that point in my life, I was like, that's ridiculous. I never gave them permission to put those things on my body. So I ditched everything right then and there and started making my own skincare products, which were working really, really well. That baby was born and she's, uh, her name's Mia. She's very healthy. But when she was two, so two years later, her molars were coming in and one of her molars came in with a natural defect in it, which was a natural cavity. So my husband and I took her to the dentist and he looked at the tooth and he said, you know what? It happens in utero. Occasionally it's a natural defect. Mom or I must've had like a day where I had a fever or something happened that was a little bit out of the ordinary and that tooth was being developed. So this natural cavity happened. He said, but it's pretty significant. So I'll put a temporary filling in it, but most likely we'll have to pull that tooth within a year. And I was just sort of like, oh, well, here I am making all these natural things. I'm going to investigate the mouth and the teeth and see if there's anything I can do. Because I knew at that point we were using like a natural toothpaste, but I sort of knew in the back of my mind that if I keep using what I'm using, it's probably not going to be beneficial for her. It might not do any harm, but is it really doing any good? So I came across Dr. Weston Price Um, when I started doing my research. And he's a dentist, in my opinion, that was way before his time. He was in, you know, around the early 1900s when he was doing his research on third world countries and their oral care and dental care and entire body health. And he noticed that their oral care was very good. They, They had these big, robust jaws, really white, big, healthy teeth and grins. And he started investigating their diet 
and related the mineral content of their soil to their healthy teeth. And as soon as these people would come over to the U.S., start eating our diet, which is you know loaded with saturated fats and sugar and preservatives and you know all sorts of things, the first thing that he, they noticed is that their dental health started declining. And then after that, they started getting the diseases that we're all prone to, which is heart disease, diabetes, cancer, all sorts of issues. So the knowledge I took from him was the fact that the the soil and the clay has the minerals in it that's keeping their teeth strong and healthy. So that's what I did as I started, I created my dirty mouth tooth powder for my daughter and it's a blend of three different clays. We can talk about that in a minute, but basically what I did was I was able to keep that tooth. She's now 10 and a half years old and she still has that tooth with that original filling that was supposed to fall out or be pulled within a year. Wow. That's an incredible story. And it's so interesting. I find very often in this health and wellness space that typically it's not someone that grew up wanting to be in the health and wellness space. It's (laughs) something happened. (laughs) You had a health problem or your daughter had a health problem, right? And then you figured out a solution that wasn't available at the time. So yeah. And I like to say, you know, what I really love about this, I've always loved being a nurse and I went back to school. I'm a nurse anesthetist. So I really got a deep dive into how the body works at the cellular level and how we detox and how we clear things out of our body. And that's when it became very apparent to me that the things that we're putting on our body do get ingested. It's just a different way of ingesting it. So whether it's your oral care products or your skincare products, but you are ingesting it through your skin and the way your body handles that is differently than when you ingest it through your mouth. Because in your mouth, those chemicals, those things that you ingest that aren't good for you can be detoxified by your liver. Your liver is your protective organ. So it, you send those things to your liver so it can convert them from fat soluble to water soluble to be excreted by your kidneys. However, when you ingest things through your skin or through the tissues inside your mouth, it doesn't go to your liver. It goes everywhere else. It gets absorbed into your vascular system. And the problem is there's so many toxins in every product that's on the market that it's almost like we're overdosing on ingredients that cause cancer that are endocrine disruptors. We wonder why we have so many issues with hormones, infertility, obesity, and it's possibly related to the fact that you're bombarding your body with chemicals through your skin and through the tissues in your mouth that are being absorbed differently and not being detoxified through your liver. Yeah, that's a great point. I think oftentimes people don't realize that the things that they're putting on their skin is being absorbed into their bloodstream. And so that's why it is really important wherever we have the control over the amount of chemicals that we're consuming, that we should make the best choice which we can, which is to limit those chemicals as much as humanly possible, because we're not going to be able to avoid the pollution. We're not going to be able to avoid when we're going out to eat at a restaurant or things like that are out of our control. But when we have the control in our own home, that's where we have to make the best choices that we can. I agree. And what I really love to add to that is these toxins, and this just isn't from your skincare, it's any toxins that you absorb, can be stored in your fat tissue, which only, you know, it's significant in itself. But here's what people don't realize or think about is when you go on a diet or you start to lose weight, you are metabolizing fat that has toxins in it more rapidly than on an everyday, you're not metabolizing fat. So you can get actual an insurge of toxins into your bloodstream. So that's why it's really important when you are working out and burning fat that you also want to make sure that you're staying hydrated, drinking enough water, even doing some detoxification types of things like clay detoxing or infrared saunas, things like that, just because your fat tissue stores these toxins and you know, three, four, five days into your fat burning cycle, you can start to get almost like a brain fog and an overload and that you get that feeling of I'm not feeling well. And it could be related to the stuff that you're burning that you just need to get rid of. Yeah, it's really fascinating how the body works and how the body is always trying to protect you. I've even read some research in terms of people trying to lose weight and then they hit that plateau and they're doing all the right things. They're eating all the healthy foods, they're exercising, but they just hit that plateau. And one theory is that it's because your body is holding on to these toxins. And if it were to just release them, that would be (laughs) very detrimental. And that's why you have to actually detox these things before you can then get back on that path to weight loss. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? We don't even think about that, but our body is so protective of us. It knows how to keep you safe, really. Yeah. 
So let's talk about toothpaste and oral care products, even mouthwash, because I always talk about mouthwash and how do you really want to kill 99.9% of the bacteria in your mouth? (laughs) So do we want to be killing 99.9% of the bacteria in our mouth or why don't we want to do that? Yeah. So we've all been brainwashed into believing that, you know, for most people, when they hear the word bacteria, they go running. They're like, oh my gosh, I got to get rid of my bacteria. We got to use our antimicrobial um, hand soaps and then put the lotion on that has is killing everything. We're overdoing it. Your bacteria is not all bad. In fact, the majority of bacteria is actually good. And we are, you know, I like to say that I'm a house, a mobile home for bacteria. You basically you bring bacteria from point A to point B. And if you don't have good bacteria, and we've heard a lot of talk about the gut biome. So that's basically the good bacteria. But the gut biome, here's the interesting thing. You talk about killing 99% of the bacteria inside or germs, which is bacteria inside your mouth. What we're basically doing when we're using that is sterilizing our mouth. So let me take you back really quick to, I don't know, however old you are that many years ago to when you were inside your mom and you were still being developed and you haven't been born yet. And it was super nice and warm and super cozy in there. But what I want you to realize is that there were zero germs in there. You were in a completely sterile environment. And that's the only time in your life that you were ever in a sterile environment. The minute you were born began your immune system. And for people that were born with the normal vaginal delivery through the birth canal, your exposure to the bacteria in the birth canal, that bacteria is good bacteria. It's there protecting mom, but it's also there for baby as the very first exposure to bacteria because that bacteria is what sparked your immune system. Because as baby goes through the birth canal head first, the bacteria gets in the nose and the mouth. And then the baby with salivating and swallowing swallows that good bacteria. That is how you started the bacteria and the, your immune system, not just inside your mouth, but inside your gut. Whatever bacteria is inside your mouth, you swallow it. That's what feeds and seeds your digestive bacteria. So what we've done, if that's how our immune system started, and that's how our immune system is supposed to function, when we're using products like this that kill the bacteria inside our mouth, we are sterilizing our mouth. And when you're exposed to things like E. coli or H. pylori or the flu virus or bacteria that causes common cold, flu, whatever, the place to actually kill it and stop it is right there inside your mouth. But if you sterilize your mouth and you don't have your good microbiome, you actually swallow and ingest that into your intestines or they pass through your gum tissue. And that's how you get infected. For most people, if you're taking probiotics or eating a healthy diet, If you are using products that kill the good microbiome inside your mouth where your immune system should start, you're actually wasting your money because the first 12 inches of your immune system is sterile. And that is really where your immune system counts to actually fight what you're exposed to. Like you said, you're exposed to stuff all day long in the environment. Here's what's interesting is it takes approximately three days to regrow or reestablish your microbiome, your good bacteria inside your mouth that will fight off the bad stuff and keep you safe and protected. But when you're brushing with, I call it toxipaste, but when you're brushing with toxipaste or using mouthwash twice a day, you are basically not even allowing your immune system to even get that jump start because it takes a little while. But while you've sterilized your mouth, you are exposed to the bacteria and viruses and pollution and everything, including heavy metals in the environment, and you have no defense against it. So we really need to reestablish the microbiome inside the mouth. That is fascinating. I didn't even realize, didn't even think that because we're killing all the bacteria in our mouth, I mean, it it makes sense now that you've said it, but that we are actually putting our immune system, we're basically making ourselves more susceptible to catching germs and different illnesses and pathogens because we don't have that microbiome in our mouth, which is quite fast. Yeah. And your mouth, there's a direct correlation between your condition inside your mouth. So if someone opens their mouth, you can basically diagnose whether they have internal issues happening. And by that, I mean, if you look inside someone's mouth and you see gum disease or redness, irritation to the gum tissue, if you see yellowing to the teeth, or a lot of cavities, 
if you see that their mouth is dry, their tissues look a little dehydrated and, or if they've got a coating on their tongue, things like that, you can basically look inside someone's mouth and predict whether they have inflammation. Inflammation inside the body can show up in many ways. It can show up as the common cold. It can show up as the flu. It can show up as heart disease. The plaque in heart disease, the plaque in the arteries of people that have heart disease is the exact same plaque that is found inside your mouth on your teeth. It's the exact same plaque. Alzheimer's has been linked to oral care. Inflammatory diseases, including diabetes, cancer, all of those things are directly related to the conditions inside your mouth. If you want better internal health, I always say it's almost like it's really important to eat a healthy diet, take supplements, and use probiotics to keep yourself healthy. But if your mouth is not healthy, those things, you're not getting the full benefit of them. You're actually taking them and actually wasting your money uh, because really you need to change. Most people will notice a huge difference inside their body, their internal health, after they change the condition inside their mouth. Yeah, and you brought up a great point, which I don't think many people know that there's quite a bit of research and data and science on the fact that if your oral care is not up to par, that it can lead or increase your risk for various different chronic illnesses and diseases. So, okay, it sounds like conventional toothpaste and conventional mouthwash, those are not great for us because they're gonna basically kill all our good bacteria in there. So what should we be using instead? So here's my point about the reason that you brush your teeth. If I get you to think a little bit differently outside the box from what we've been told, then you can make a decision when you find something that you think might be healthy, whether this will be good for brushing my teeth and my immune system, or will this not be what I need? So if we stop thinking that we need to brush our teeth to clean them, because that's what we've been brainwashed into believing we need to kill all the germs inside our mouth and we need to clean our teeth. And to be honest with you, you do not want to kill all the germs inside your mouth. You actually want your good microbiome, as we discussed. The other thing about cleaning your teeth is that your saliva is actually meant, it's your body's way of cleaning your teeth, remineralizing your teeth, neutralizing the acids, and starting and feeding and seeding your immune system because it carries the good bacteria or bad, if it's bad bacteria inside your mouth, into your digestive system. So those are the functions of your saliva. Now, If you stop thinking that you need to brush your teeth to clean them, because just by using a toothbrush and water, you will clean your teeth. So what you use is only important if you want to actually change the conditions inside your mouth and prevent cavities and prevent gum disease and rebuild your microbiome. So the reason you really want to brush your teeth, there's two reasons. You want to put minerals back in your teeth And you want to, because the minerals are what's going to keep your teeth strong, cavity resistant and healthy. And then the other part has to do more with your microbiome, which will then help your gum tissue as well, but reestablish your microbiome inside your mouth, which is your immune system. Those are the two reasons you want to clean or put something to brush your teeth with. If you're using conventional toothpaste, you will never ever heal a cavity or prevent cavities because the ingredients that are in there are actually more acidic than alkaline. And I'll explain the difference there and what that means inside your mouth. But they also don't have any minerals in them to actually reestablish the minerals in your teeth that are being lost every day. And they do not have any way of reproducing a good microbiome inside your mouth. And most likely they're killing all good bacteria, including bad bacteria inside your mouth. And by the way, bad bacteria isn't bad inside your mouth because that's what really builds your immune system, right? I mean, when you're exposed to something, that's how it sparks your immune system to create some sort of defense against it. So bad bacteria isn't necessarily bad either. So by sterilizing your mouth, you're just wiping out your entire immune system and you're relying on your small intestine then to create what it needs to protect you. And that's not where it should start because then you end up with gum tissue that's allowing it's, I call it leaky gums and leaky gum tissue allows the bacteria, the viruses, food particles, all the stuff that leaky gut allows, but it happens inside your mouth, which is more devastating than inside your gut. So by looking at what your toothpaste or what you're brushing your teeth with, you want something that has minerals in it. And the one thing I want to mention about natural tooth powders, cause you might be like, okay, well I, I use a natural toothpaste. There's nothing bad in it. So it's good. 
but most natural toothpaste do not have anything in it to remineralize your teeth. It just has stuff in it to clean your teeth, but doesn't have anything in it to put the minerals back in. So you really, the most effective way, I'm going to go back to Dr. Weston Price, the most effective way to remineralize your teeth comes from the minerals, ion minerals from soil or clay. The clay is very healing for your mouth. It's been used for years for detoxifying the body. And the same thing happens inside your mouth. When you brush with a clay-based tooth powder, it will actually pull toxins like heavy metals from your gum tissue and all the tissues of your mouth. It gently cleans your teeth. It whitens your teeth. But it, more importantly, it's alkalizing and it puts the minerals, it's got the minerals in it. So your teeth the way to remineralize your teeth, it has to be alkaline in your mouth for minerals to go back in. And that's why your saliva is really important because it helps to neutralize acids after you eat. It neutralizes acids and has minerals in it. So that's how your nor your body's mechanism of remineralizing your teeth happens. And if you're under the acidic condition, so food, most foods that we eat are acidic. Under acidic conditions, minerals leave your teeth. The problem with conventional toothpaste is that it has an ingredient. Most of them have glycerin in it, which puts a coating over your teeth. So glycerin is like, you can either think of it like saran wrap or a Band-Aid. And it puts this coating over your teeth so that you don't feel sensitivities, but you don't get minerals back in. So the sensitivities, are, the sensitivities you're feeling in your teeth to hot and cold and acid foods is because you've lost minerals. And once you lose enough minerals that it starts to leach into your dentin, that's when you start to have the pain associated with sensitive teeth. Commercial toothpaste knows this and they don't want you to have pain. So they put glycerin in it so you don't feel like, so you feel like you're doing good, but you're never gonna remineralize that tooth. The way to remineralize it is to put the minerals back in and it has to be in an alkaline condition, which is why your saliva is super important, which is why a clay base that's alkalizing is extremely important as well because both of those will help put the minerals back in your teeth. And then lastly, the clay is really, really good and beneficial. It does not, hurt your good bacteria because it's more alkaline. It allows your good bacteria to be reestablished inside your mouth, but it doesn't allow bad bacteria to grow. In fact, it helps get rid of the bad bacteria inside your mouth. Wow. So yeah, very fascinating. And it's very interesting how the conventional toothpaste, which we've all grown up on, is not actually cleaning our teeth or doing as much for our teeth as we would hope that it would. Now, you keep mentioning remineralizing, and you even mentioned earlier that when your daughter had the cavity and then you used this natural toothpaste with her and then, and then her tooth ended up being fine. So, and I've actually seen online, I know Wellness Mama has talked about this a bit, you can actually reverse a cavity. Is that right? Oh yeah. I have a whole, I did a masterclass on how to heal a cavity. It's fascinating. It's really super simple. And that's what just blows my mind is that we can be doing this. It's so easy. It's really switching what you're already doing. You're just, you're brushing your teeth for two minutes, just switch what you're using and it's going to change the environment inside your mouth. So the formula for a cavity, I actually have written out the formula for a cavity and the exact way to reverse that. And I've mentioned all of this, but I'm going to put it really simple for you. The formula for a cavity is bad bacteria inside your mouth, plus the sugars from your diet. And sugars come in carbohydrates, uh, simple sugars, artificial sugar, whatever you want to call it. It's sugar in your diet. That can never be removed because in any diet, we always have carbohydrates and sugars. So you can decrease the amount and use natural, but it doesn't matter. The, the bacteria feeds off sugar and it creates that acid in your mouth. And during that acid, is when minerals leave your tooth. So you're gonna end up with what looks like a cavity eventually or just a demineralization of your tooth. And I like to show this, this is a lava rock. So if anybody has lava rocks in their yard or their neighbors, neighbors do pick it up because this is sort of like, the, it reminds me of the moon, but your teeth, this is a little more than what your teeth would be as far as the holes in the pits. But like but looking at this lava rock, you can see that it's got a lot of different holes and the surface isn't super smooth. Well, your tooth isn't either. either. And when you lose minerals, you start to get these big holes and pits. And as soon as it gets deep enough that it goes into the dentin, 
as I mentioned earlier, that's when you start to feel the sensitivities. You do need to replace those minerals. If you don't replace those minerals, you are going to end up with a cavity. But using a clay base or something that has the minerals in it, you can definitely put those minerals back in there. But the whole thing is you got to reverse the formula for a cavity. So if we go back to the formula of bad bacteria plus sugar equals lactic acid, which demineralization happens, all we have to do is flip the bad bacteria to good bacteria. So you want to grow some good bacteria, doesn't feed off sugars the way that bad bacteria does. And it's not going to be an acidic environment. It's going to create an alkaline environment because good bacteria grows in an alkaline environment. During an alkaline environment, which happens when you have saliva in your mouth, and also happens when you brush with a clay-based toothpaste or tooth powder, the alkaline condition allows the minerals to go back in your teeth. So I always like to say, because I get a lot of dental hygienists on my site that are yelling at me that you can never, you cannot heal a cavity. They are angry at me for saying this. And I always come back and tell them they are absolutely correct. If you continue using toxic paste and things like mouthwash, you will never heal a cavity under those conditions. So they are right. But they are wrong in the fact that if you change what you're using and change the condition inside your mouth, you absolutely 100% can heal a cavity. But using the wrong products will never get you there. Yeah. So actually, interestingly enough, this was a couple of years ago, I had went to a new dentist and um, I went in and he was actually, he was a green dentist. And I went in there and I was expecting just to have like a easy breezy in and out clean, you know, check up and go. And he's like, you have four cavities. And I was like, there's no way in hell that I have four cavities, but okay. <laughs> so I was like, maybe he's just trying to charge me more or whatever the case is. So I'm like, okay, let's see. So I wanted to go to another doctor for a second opinion. And in that in-between time, just to be on the safe side, I was using like a remineralizing toothpaste and, you know, making sure that I was like really on top of my dental care more than usual. And I went to the, the second doctor and I didn't have one. So I don't know if the first one was just telling me I had four cavities. I have no idea. Or if it actually remineralized, but either way, I, I didn't end up with the cavities. So that was, uh, that was nice. Yeah, that's interesting. I have, um, and it, the testimony, this woman called me, her name was Miss Gibbs and she's from Texas. And I'll never forget this night. It was a Saturday night. I was exhausted. I think it was 10 PM. And I thought, I'm just going to listen. I'll answer one more voice message. So I listened to the recording and it was this woman from Texas who was ecstatic and excited and wanted to let me know that she had six cavities when she had gone to her dentist a couple months earlier and one of them needed a root canal. So as a last resort, she ordered my dirty mouth tooth powder and wanted to give it a try. And she called me when she was just leaving the dentist office ecstatic because she sat down in the chair to get her root canal and the dentist sent her home because she only had one small cavity. It had healed everything, including the one that needed a root canal to the point where it was just a small cavity at that point. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So it can happen. It really can, it can happen, but you have to change that whole immune system and environment inside your mouth. And it will not happen using conventional toothpaste. In fact, dental care, you know, if you look at oral care and dental cavities, the incidence hasn't decreased since we've used fluoride in our toothpaste. The incidence has actually gone up. And if you look at if, if oral care, your oral wellness is directly correlated to internal health, that is very obvious as well, because our health statistics have declined tremendously. No one's getting healthier. Everyone's getting sicker. And I, I think it's death by design when companies are putting these things in our bodies that are known to cause cancer and inflammation. And inflammation is the root of all disease, including cancer. So, you know, when you look at the statistics, there's, you just have to stop and think, no, no kidding, no kidding. Our health is declining. Look at our oral care products. Right. And where does flossing fit into all of this? <laughs> Three million dollar question. <laughs> what are we doing about flossing? I love flossing. I honestly don't do it every single day. I do it probably every other day. And you know, there's a lot of research flossing good, flossing bad. I like flossing, but I do it a little bit differently. I have a gum serum. We just came out and we can talk about CBD too if you want for a minute. Because mm -hmm. I just came out with a new CBD product for the mouth. 
but CBD is a huge buzzword and I'll get into that in a minute. But my gum serum, what I like to do is when I floss, I put my gum serum, which has olive oil as the base, and then it has the essential oils in it that helps speed healing and decrease inflammation. And the reason I think flossing is really good is really because the tissue between your teeth gets so ignored. And stimulation of just the flossing mechanism itself, cleaning the between the teeth is really important, but just stimulating that gum tissue sparks growth and keeps it healthier. So while I don't know that it's 100% necessarily to do it twice a day or every day, I think everybody kind of figures out what's good for them or what works for them. But I do think it's important to continue to do it at least a couple times a week and using something like my gum serum, because in between your teeth, in those pockets, that's where you can get pockets that bacteria can harbor or hide. And really you want to be able to get rid of that bad bacteria because that's what causes the receding gums. And most people start with gum disease in their teens, but don't really notice it until they're 20, 30, or 40. And by that time, it's gotten to the point where now you're trying to regrow gums, which are difficult. It can happen, but it's difficult to regrow gums because the reasons I mentioned before, the environment inside your mouth is always stressed for the most part. You're always exposed to things. You're always, you know, it can be acid, alkaline. It can go from one extreme to the other. The one thing I do want to mention really quick, because it's a great analogy, you know, the people that tell me you can't heal a cavity, the analogy that I usually make is if you think you that if you believe that you can heal a bone, then you should believe that you can heal a cavity because bone tissue is exactly the same minerals as your teeth and your teeth are actually made stronger. And that's because it's the environment that they're in. So if you stop and think about the environment that your bones are in, as a nurse, I can tell you the environment is a neutral environment. Your pH of your blood and your tissues is typically very neutral, except in a stressed out environment where there's infection and things like that. But on an average, your bones are in a neutral environment. And that meaning that there's not an in and out flux of the minerals as rapidly as inside your mouth. But because you're more neutral, minerals can go in and they can go out very easily. It's under an acidic environment that the minerals go out and they don't go back in. But inside your mouth, it's always going from acid to alkaline. And you're hoping that it's more alkaline more of the time. And that's what we want to create. And speaking of the acid alkaline, in terms of when people should be brushing their teeth, right after they eat a meal, should they wait a little while or should they brush right away? You know, it's not always easy to brush right after a meal, but if you can, that's probably the best time, especially if you had a sugary food or diet or whatever. And primarily because of the formula for a cavity includes that sugar. And the longer that the bacteria, if there's bad bacteria, can feed off of that sugar, the more likely that you can end up with problems. But on the other hand, if you're using good products and you have good oral care and you have good conditions inside your mouth and you're making good saliva, it's not really necessary to brush right after you eat, unless you're eating really sticky, gooey foods. And that would be high, you know, more sugar and stuff like that. But really you want to make sure that you're hydrated enough that you're salivating because your saliva is really your body's 24 hour defense against bad bacteria and demineralization. And here's the interesting thing too. I'm assuming that you have a big majority of women that watch you. Probably a lot of them are childbearing age. So let me touch on this or know someone that's childbearing age. So let me touch on this because it's really important. Women that are pregnant, your oral care is extremely important and actually affects the health of baby. It's directly related, but it's also directly related to preterm labor your oral care. But what's really crazy is a lot of women postpartum, post-delivery end up with sensitive teeth and cavities. And it's called, somebody's mentioned like one cavity per baby is what somebody said. Yeah, you know, you get one cavity per baby. And I started thinking about that. I know, right? (laughs) And I started thinking, and it was from like a mom's group. And I was like, what does that mean? I didn't have cavities. And then I stopped. So I went back to the drawing board, me as a nurse, how does biologically, why would this happen? So I came up with this theory, which I think is very accurate. 
So baby is being developed. And if you think about this, your saliva has minerals in it. That's your body's own way of putting minerals back in your teeth. If you have any malabsorption, if you have irritable bowel, if you have leaky gut, Crohn's, colitis, any digestive issues whatsoever, you have malabsorption. If you have malabsorption, you're not absorbing as many minerals as possible. So you're going to have less in your body to put back into your saliva, which is going to decrease the mineral content and you are prone to cavities. The other factor during pregnancy is that as babies being developed, think about this, baby has to develop bones and teeth not to mention everything else. But where is baby getting all those minerals from? So baby is pulling those minerals. Mom is very giving all the minerals the baby takes and leeches. So it's not that the baby's taking the minerals from mom's teeth, but she's baby, he, she is actually taking the minerals that were supposed to end up in mom's saliva to remineralize her teeth during the salivation process. So the pregnancy decreases the number of minerals that are actually available in your saliva. That's why moms end up with sensitive teeth and cavities post baby, but that can be fixed by brushing with a mineral rich tooth powder. Isn't that fascinating? It really is. And it sort of makes sense, right? Because that goes really hand in hand with the Weston A. Price theory, which is it's not just that a Western diet is high in sugar. Of course, that's part of it, but it's also malnutrition, right? That's part of the reason why he believed that people were more prone to getting cavities and having dental problems, correct? Oh, absolutely. And it starts with your mouth. You know, technically, if you have good bacteria inside your mouth. And it doesn't take that long to reestablish it. You'd be actually be really surprised. I had a customer recently email me. She'd been using my tooth powder for a week and she was astonished. She said, I have to ask you this. I feel like I'm going crazy. Have you ever heard anyone ask, you know, I've been using it for a week and I swear my internal health is much better. And I'm, you know, she's like, my gut feels better here. It's because we're destroying the good bacteria. You're supposed to swallow that. The bacteria in your mouth is supposed to be healthy bacteria. And that's what feeds and seeds your gut. Like think about this, your body, it was designed to understand what's in your environment. It's like eating honey from the bees that are local, because it's going to give you what you need for your local immune system. Same thing. The environment that you're in gets into your body, mostly through your nose passage in your mouth, right? So that's where you need a defense that goes, oh, I recognize this. Let's make a defense against that. As you swallow that good bacteria, it's giving your gut the right bacteria to fight infections and diseases. If you don't have that good bacteria inside your mouth, and you're only swallowing the stuff that you're absorbing from the environment, you're swallowing that into your gut. And no wonder why we have digestive issues. Technically, if you have good bacteria inside your mouth, you do not need to take a probiotic. In fact, I don't take a probiotic unless I feel like I've been exposed to something or I feel like my immune system's dipping. That's when I'll take a probiotic to give myself a boost. But you shouldn't really need to take a probiotic every single day if you have an immune system that actually starts where it's supposed to start, which is inside your mouth. Right. And that's the whole thing with probiotics. We're taking probiotics to replenish when we're a little bit off or we need a little extra support. But if you already have a teeming environment inside you, like you said, what did you call yourself? A uh, a caravan for bacteria or something. <laughs> then, then you should be okay. It should do the job for you. Right. And you know, right. I've been using natural toothpaste, all different varieties. I've tried them all for many years now. And one of the biggest changes that I noticed personally is that when I used to use conventional toothpaste and conventional mouthwash, I used to use it religiously. I would wake up in the morning and my breath would stink. Like I would have to go then use the mouthwash and use the toothpaste first thing in the morning because it was just disgusting, quite frankly. But since switching over to using natural products, my breath like never stinks. I mean, unless I eat something like some garlic or something, but otherwise I don't have that odor anymore. Isn't that interesting? And it's because, so it's a cycle and that's one of the rings, the things they sell you on is bad breath, use this bad breath. But this is creating the bad breath because your good microbiome, that's what happens when you have an alkaline mouth and a good microbiome is you don't have bad breath. I haven't had bad breath in years. On occasion, when you start to get dehydrated, you know, or whatever, you might have bad breath. But on a regular basis, you technically should not have bad breath. It's created 
by the products that are being used on the market and sold to us. And that's part of the problem is it's that cycle of believing that bacteria is bad, but bacteria is not bad. In fact, bad bacteria isn't always bad either, as long as it's in an environment that it can be exposed to, build a defense against, and get rid of. So right. really, you know, we do need good and bad bacteria. It's the fact that we're destroying all of our good defense against it. So we can't even, we don't even have time to create a defense against bad bacteria because then we come back, it's 12 hours later and we need to brush again. And so we kill any good bacteria that we've actually harbored inside our mouth. Right. And now what about teeth whitening? I know I see on Instagram, everyone's doing these like lasers and like these very harsh chemicals. So how do we make sure that our teeth are white naturally? And are there any dangers or things to watch out for with the conventional way of whitening your teeth? Yeah. Have you ever used like the whitening strips and felt like intense? Yes, many years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. So the clay-based tooth powders um, and the charcoal help whiten your teeth. So they will help whiten your teeth. They help remove surface stains. I'm glad you asked this because I created a really good alternative to people that want whiter teeth, but it does way more than just whiten your teeth. So first off, let me tell you about peroxide and the reason why it hurts your teeth, not to mention that it's toxic for your gum tissue and your microbiome inside your mouth. So it's not healthy for you anyway, but some of us put that aside to be, have whiter teeth and, you know, look better. Sometimes we, you know, can justify things. Oh, I'll deal with that. But For your teeth, the reason that peroxide hurts is because, remember, when you have holes or pits in your enamel, things leak in or out. And your dentin, let me just give you a quick little anatomy of your tooth. So this is on the white part of your tooth, the enamel is the thickest. Your enamel is the whitest part of your tooth. As we age, um, depending on what you're brushing your teeth with and the conditions inside your mouth, the thinner and thinner your enamel gets the more sensitive to your teeth, but also the more yellow or bluish or grayish color they will be because the layer underneath is dentin. Dentin has less minerals in it. I think it's around 70 or 80%, whereas your enamel is like 96% minerals. So the dentin still has minerals in it, but it's fluid filled. It's got a little bit more fluid and it's that cushion so that when you're biting down on something, you don't have pain because inside your dentin is your pulp, which contains your nerves and your blood vessels protected in here. But yet when things seep down, so if you have a hole like a cavity like this one that goes into the dentin, things can get in there. That's why you feel the pain. So what's interesting about peroxide is peroxide actually seeps into your dentin and dehydrates it. It pulls out the fluid so that instead of looking yellowish or grayish, it actually looks white. That's how peroxide works to whiten your teeth. But it hurts because right as it gets in there, as soon as it seeps down far enough, it's going to hit your pulp and your pulp has your nerves in it. That's why it hurts. Also has your blood vessels. So it can actually seep internally into you. This is also the reason the anatomy of your tooth right here is the reason you cannot take a supplement to directly remineralize your teeth. Because if you see here, you've got your blood vessels are inside the pulp. It doesn't seep minerals out that way. You have to have the minerals on the outside in order to remineralize your teeth. Indirectly taking supplements does, but you have to be able obviously to absorb the minerals and then have them land in sufficient amounts in your saliva. That is how indirectly taking supplements and food will remineralize your teeth. So that's how peroxide works. Peroxide works basically by dehydrating your enamel, dehydrating your pulp and making it look whiter. So because of that, I wanted to create a system where people could actually use it and it would actually rebuild, when you talk about the enamel, actually rebuild that layer, which is the whitest part of your tooth. It will also remove surface stains. So it's not working like peroxide to dehydrate your pulp. It's actually going to work to rebuild the white part of your enamel and to remove surface stains. So what I did is created a gel and I've got a really cool LED I'll show you too, but this is the gel. It's activated charcoal. So it's black and it is an olive oil base. There's zero peroxide in here. So it's olive oil. It has uh, charcoal, two different clays in it. The clays have the minerals in it to rebuild your enamel, which will ultimately over time whiten your teeth 
better and longer and healthier. And then it also has essential oils and the essential oils are really good for your gum tissue. They speed healing, just like the gum serum that I talked about improves the blood flow to your gum tissue, but it also, they are there for your teeth as well to help whiten your teeth. The system itself. So this is the mouthpiece and it's really cool. It lights up. It has LEDs. I'll light it up in a second, but I wanted to show you, it has three different adapters on it. So it plugs into any iPhone, any Android, and then any USB. So it's really convenient. A customer once emailed me, her favorite time to use it is when she's making dinner. Because once you put the gel on this and you put this in your mouth, you can't eat anything. (laughs) So she makes dinner for her kids and herself and she's snacking, which I do too. So that's now my time to use this. It only takes about 20 minutes. So I'm going to plug this into my phone. I'm going to show you guys how it works. So it's got 12 blue LEDs and it has four red LED lights on it. And LED is different than UV. Most dentist offices, when they do whitening treatments, they use UV light. UV is the lights that change the cells so it can cause cancer. Whereas LED light has been safe. It penetrates into the tissues, but it doesn't cause any cellular changes. So the LED lights are safe, doesn't emit any EMFs. We get questions about that as well. We've had that tested. But the blue light helps to decrease the bacteria that causes gingivitis. And it also helps to remove the surface stains using the activated charcoal gel. The red light is really important for the gum tissue. The red light does the exact same thing that red light does for the skin and the tissues of the body where they've used red light to speed healing for wounds and things like that. It penetrates into the tissues. It increases blood flow, decreases the inflammation in there. And for the gum tissue, since the gum tissue is the gateway for inflammation to get into your body, the stronger and healthier your gums are, the stronger or the healthier internally you're going to be. So you just use this system with a little bit of gel. You put the gel right on there, pop this in your mouth, set your timer 15 to 20 minutes and use this a couple times a week. We recommend five times a week for the first four weeks. And then after that, because the system's doing more than just whitening your teeth. It's rebuilding your enamel. It's also going to help rebuild your microbiome by killing the bad bacteria. And it's also going to be cleaning your teeth and keeping your mouth really healthy. We recommend doing it three times a week. And I say for life because it's really a therapy for your entire body. The first set comes with two treatment gels, which is 20 treatments. So you get your first month supply of treatment gels when you buy the package. The kid. I must say your teeth are very white. <laughs> so looking at you on the video, they're like the same color as the white wall behind you. And what's funny is I do this a lot. I do it for Facebook. Um, I'm always using the LED, but I don't always get a full 20 minute treatment in because I'm for the most part in and out, in and out. And then during the day, I'll try and do a, a 20 minute or at least a 10 to 15 minute treatment. And I can tell you, you can actually use this by itself without the gel. But when you're doing it without the gel, you're doing it primarily for the red back, for the red light for your gum tissue and to kill the bacteria that causes gingivitis. But long term, you always want to use the gel at least two to three times a week just because it's going to be rebuilding the enamel. The other thing is I want to touch on is the CBD part of it as well, because mm-hmm. CBD is really big. So do you want, can we talk yeah. about that for a second? Yeah. So I just came out with a formula of tooth powder and gum serum that both have the CBD in it. And CBD is the part of the hemp plant that decreases inflammation. It's very powerful. It's a powerful antioxidant and it's powerful in really calming almost anything like tissue, mind, uh, things like that. So when I was just at the natural products expo and CBD was huge and uh, people would walk by our booth and they'd see the CBD tooth powder and gum serum and they'd be like, why would you want it in dental products? And I started laughing. And as soon as I told them, their eyes lit up and they're like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. So when I talked about how the gums are the gatekeeper for health and a lot of inflammation, like the inflammation in your gum tissue is directly related to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, everything, including, you know, baby's health. So inflammation in the gums is really, if there's any place in your body that you want to decrease the inflammation and keep it as healthy as possible, it would be your entire digestive tract, which starts inside your mouth in your gum tissue. So by using a gum serum and a tooth powder that has CBD in it, it's not really for your teeth. It's more for your gum tissue, keeping them calm, cool, and 
anti-inflammatory, keeping the inflammation down so that you can have healthier gums. And if you have any issues, if you end up with a sore or something like that, it will help speed healing because it increases the blood flow with the other ingredients that are in there. So that's why we put it in the oral care products. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so besides for using a natural, like a tooth powder, a clay-based toothpaste, let's say, and natural products, what else can we be doing for our dental health? So just, you know what, one of the things I tell people is um, just keep an eye on your sugar content, obviously. You know, that's always important, not just for oral health, but for overall body health, brain health and everything. Also scraping your tongue. I don't know if you've ever tried doing it. Yes, I love (laughs) tongue scraping, but that's also something where I do it now. Like I used to feel like I had to do it all of the time because it's basically when you wake up in the morning, there's that white coating on your tongue. And then a tongue scraping, it's actually an Ayurvedic practice where you take Mm -hmm. this little copper sort of bent tool and you just basically scrape your tongue and it takes that coating off your tongue in the morning. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's really easy. I mean, it's so easy to use and it takes about 10 seconds. Yeah. And you feel so great after you do it. It's like, I don't know, it just feels really good. Also, you can taste things better, right? Like because your your taste buds are now freed from that gunk. But I, I find now that I just use all the natural stuff, like I still do it once in a while, but I don't like I don't have anywhere where near as much of that white stuff on my tongue anymore. Yeah, because it's related to the bacteria. So you're creating an environment inside your mouth where that bacteria can't live. That just proves my whole point of everything that we talked about. Like if you do the right things, like the maintenance part of life really shouldn't be trying to get out of an illness. It should be keeping yourself from actually being sick, the preventative part of it. And the great thing about prevention is when you're doing all the right things, like working out, if you skip two days of working out, you haven't lost anything like, you know, so the same thing with these practices. And that's why I mentioned, like, I don't necessarily floss every single day. It's because the environment in my inside my mouth is now conditioned to be healthy. If I started using the wrong products, I would probably have to floss every day, but I'd then have bleeding gums and all the other issues that come along with it, but scraping your tongue. So when you start doing it, you'll probably want to do it every day, at least once a day, two to three swipes is all you really need. And then you know, like Maria said, if your mouth feels good and looks good, you don't necessarily have to do it every day, but it's a great practice to do a couple times a week, two, three times a week, just to maintain, because that coating that can get on your tongue is bacteria. It's like a bacterial coating. And obviously that harbors, like I call it a biofilm. A biofilm is basically just a protective coating over bacteria. That's the same thing as plaque. That's what plaque is. Plaque is the primary biofilm in our body. And it's really just protecting the bacteria so that the bacteria can grow and spread and get into your body. So you do want to remove it. And then once you do remove it, it's easier and less likely that it's going to return, especially if you have the right environment. And then it does free your taste buds. So things taste much better. So that's, we call this happy papillae because your taste buds are (laughs) called papillae. Yeah. And what about oil pulling? Yeah. Oil pulling. So people always ask me, do I still have to oil pull? It's 20 minutes a day. And I always tell them, you know, you can do it if you want. Like, I, you know, oil pulling is a great thing, but the reasons people oil pull is really to pull toxins. And most people use coconut oil. You swish it around for anybody that doesn't know, you swish it, take a teaspoon, tablespoon of coconut oil, swish it around in your mouth, swish it for 20 minutes, spit it out into the garbage. But What it's doing is it's pulling toxins from your gum tissues and it helps whiten your teeth. It helps with the microbiome and it does a couple other things. But the main reason people do it is to pull toxins. What I love to tell people that like really like doing oil pulling for what it does, but hate the 20 minutes. I love to tell them that if you brush with dirty mouth tooth powder, where's my tooth powder, you basically have the exact same effect in two minutes of brushing because clay. So the blend of three clays that I use is bentonite clay, white kaolin clay and French green clay. And all three of them together bind so quickly and strongly to toxins in your tissues as you're brushing. So you want to make sure that you do get to your gum tissues to spread the 
powder to your, your gum tissues, it's going to bind so strongly that it pulls it out in two minutes. And you're going to get basically the same detox, even better actually than coconut oil would. The other thing that coconut oil does that the tooth powder does, tooth powder cleans your teeth, it whitens your teeth, and it helps reestablish the minerals in your teeth, which coconut oil won't do. And it helps to reestablish the microbiome. So you can still do oil pulling, but you don't have to when you're brushing with dirty mouth tooth powder because it does the exact same thing. Right. And this is so easy. I don't know if anybody's not used tooth powder before, but really easy. It's a white powder, unless you get my black formula, which has charcoal added to this blend. And the cool thing about my blend, this is what sets my tooth powder. I know there's a couple other ones on the market. And really I was the founder of tooth powder. And when I created this, I created it so that it had the right blend and the right alkalinity. And because I'm a nurse anesthetist, I always want to decrease inflammation and pain in any way, form, or shape. Because the minute you have pain, it increases stress and it increases all of those things inside your body, which cause more harm than good. So the French green clay that's in here is from the sea and it has all the properties or the nutrients in it from LJ and all the other plants, which is really important for your gum tissue to support healing. It's super healing. The other thing it does is it has analgesic properties. So even when you do have a little bit of issues with your gum tissue, it helps promote healing, but decreases any kind of inflammation and pain that you would feel. So it's really good. So you would just wet your toothbrush, dip it, and then tap it. And then whatever's on your toothbrush, that's all you need to brush with. That's how you so use it. It's actually a very small amount. It's a really small one. It's all concentrated. People ask me why powder, not paste. And the whole reason I love powder over paste is because no matter what I mix this with, if you go back to one of the reasons that you brush your teeth is to remineralize them, anything that I would add to this would dilute down the mineral content significantly. And so what I like about this is when I'm brushing, and this is it, it goes everywhere. It gets everywhere on your mouth, tissues and your teeth. What I like about this is it's completely mineral rich. It's going to do everything. It's actually the best medium to brush your teeth with. The clay and the baking soda in here create this alkaline environment, which if you think about acid, like an acidic environment, you always think hot and red, inflamed. But when you think alkaline, you think cool and healing. And that's what this creates is that cool healing sensation inside your mouth. And the mineral content of this is 100% as opposed to if I were to dilute this down with any kind of oil, water, or anything else. I know some of the paste on the market. In fact, I just bought a well-known brand recently just to taste what theirs was like. And I was actually super shocked at how much water was in there. It's primarily water and a little bit of clay. And that's really what it is, charcoal and clay. And it's okay if you just want to clean your teeth, but if you really want to do what you want to do to your oral biome and remineralize your teeth, you really need to use something that's more concentrated. So that's the difference between my formula and the other ones that might be out there. Yeah. So th this has been a really fascinating interview. I feel like I've learned so much. And one last question I want to ask you is something yes. that I ask everyone on the podcast, and it doesn't have to be anything that we've necessarily talked about, but it could be. If you can leave our listeners with just one piece of advice on how to live a happier and healthier life, what would that be? To, oh, let's see. I have to say you, I mean, it has to be your mouth. A good health begins inside your mouth. And that might be where it ends. For most people using the wrong products, that's exactly where it ends. Because if you don't have, like we talked about, the good microbiome inside your mouth, then the rest of your body is going to suffer no matter what. Well, thank you so much. And for anyone who wants to check out your products and learn more, where can they find you? PrimalLifeOrganics.com is where they can find me. And then I'm on Facebook at Primal Life Organics. Instagram is Primal Life Org. Twitter is Primal Life Org. And then anybody that wants to check out the LED teeth whitening system, I have a special offer through a special website that if you guys are interested, you can go to Natural Teeth Whiteners with an S dot com, Natural Teeth Whiteners dot com, and you can actually get it at 50% off. Super cool. Yeah, I'm really excited to try all the powders and to try that LED lighting, uh, whatever you call it, system. And yeah. I will definitely report back on how it goes. Yay. Awesome, well, Maria. Thank you so much. I so much enjoyed all your questions and your energy being able to answer questions for you. 
Yeah, no, you're very easy to talk to. So <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Smile more. All right. Thanks, Trina.